All right, welcome back everyone for another deep dive. Today we're taking a look at Lynx. Lynx is a technology that's uh, really changing the game when it comes to designing user interfaces, UIs. Yeah. You know, like how many times have you been using an app and thought, man, if only this looked different or worked a little bit differently. Right, exactly. That's kind of what Lynx is all about, giving developers the tools to make those really slick and intuitive interfaces that I think, you know, we all want. Yeah. And what's really cool is for our deep dive today, we're going right to the source. We're looking at the Lynx Quick Start Guide. Yeah, it's a great place to start. Um, Lynx really kind of lays out this whole new way of approaching UI development. Right. And it's all about describing, you know, how the interface should look and work, but in a way that's very concise and easy to understand. Okay, so I'm seeing in the guide here, it talks about describing the UI, styling, handling interactions. Yeah. There's even a section on advanced features. Where should we even start with all this? Well, I think at its core, Lynx is really all about this idea of describing the UI using elements. And it's kind of like, I always think of it like building with digital Legos. Each element's like a block, and you can put these blocks together to create the structure of your interface. I like that. That's a good analogy. Yeah. So why is that such a big deal, though? What's the advantage of building a UI with these, like, digital Legos? Well, think about it. I mean, when you break down the UI into these little reusable pieces, developers can build these really complex interfaces with a lot less code. And, you know, they can even add new features really quickly. That makes sense. Especially, you know, thinking about how quickly acts are updated nowadays. Exactly. So that's cool. And I'm seeing here, too, it talks about Link supporting different ways to arrange these elements. Right. It says uh, linear, flexible box, grid. Yeah, grid, relative layouts. Yeah. So it's kind of like having all these options for, like you said, arranging furniture in a room. Exactly. To get the best look and feel. All right. So we've got the structure down with these elements, but what about the actual look of the interface? Mm -hmm. How do you make those digital Legos you know, actually look good. Well, that's where CSS comes in, cascading style sheets. It's basically the language of style for anything on the web. It yeah. controls like fonts, colors, spacing, the layout of elements. And the great thing is Lynx works really well with CSS. So developers can actually use CSS to fine tune how the interface looks and feels. Exactly. Does that mean they have to start from scratch every single time though? No, not at all, because CSS is like this big standard, right? There are tons of tools and resources that developers can use so they can grab pre-built styles, tweet existing ones, or if they want, they can build it all from scratch. Okay, so lots of options. Yeah. And I guess the end result there is just, you know, better designed, more visually appealing apps for all of us. Exactly, yeah, apps that are more enjoyable to use. Okay, now here's the thing. A beautiful interface? Yeah, that's great. But it's got to be interactive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It has to respond to what we're actually doing. It's got to work. And that's where Lynx, uh, it's really interesting how it handles these interactions. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's funny you mentioned that. I was just thinking about how annoying it is when you're using an app and, like, it doesn't respond how you think it should. Right, or it's slow. Yeah, like, you tap a button and nothing happens. Exactly. You're like, hello. So how does Lynx tackle that? How does it make sure that things actually work the way they should? Well, Lynx has this really clever way of handling events. Like, you know, when you click something or scroll or touch the screen... And it uses this concept called event propagation. Event propagation. Okay, break that down for me. What does that actually mean? Okay, so imagine you have a button. Okay. And that button is inside of a container. And that container is maybe inside of another container. So when you click that button, the click, it doesn't just stay there with the button. It kind of travels up. It bubbles up through all those containers. And it gives everything along the way a chance to react to that click. Interesting. So it's not just like a one-to-one. -one. Yeah. It's kind of like a chain reaction. It is. And it's a really clever way to manage these complex interactions to make the whole experience more intuitive. Okay, cool. So we've talked about, you know, elements, styling, handling interactions. Now I'm seeing here in the quick start guide, it mentions some advanced features too. Yeah. So let's dive into that a bit. I mean, what kind of advanced things are we talking about here? Well, one of the biggest things, and this is especially true you know, in the world we live in today, is performance. Okay. Yeah. I mean, no one wants to use a slow app. Nobody. No. So, so Lynx really focuses on speed. And I've definitely been guilty of, you know, if an app takes too long to load, I'm just like, forget it. Oh, I know. I do the same thing. I'm moving on. So what does Lynx actually do to make sure that things run smoothly? Well, it's built for speed from the ground up. You know, one of the things it does is something called instant first frame rendering. 
So that means even before the whole app is loaded, you see something on the screen. Okay. So it feels really snappy and responsive. I see. You're not just staring at a blank screen. Right. Exactly. You're like, okay, something's happening. Exactly. That's cool. Okay. So smooth, responsive, but let's be real. Every app has bugs. Right. Even the best developers, they make mistakes. It happens. So how does Lynx deal with that whole debugging process? Well, Lynx gives developers these really great tools for debugging. It's kind of like having x-ray vision into the code. You know, you can see exactly what's going on, where things might be going wrong, so you can pinpoint those errors and fix them quickly. Oh, okay. So it's like a much smoother process. A much smoother process. Not as much like pulling your hair out exactly. actually to figure out where the bug is. No more late nights. <laughs> okay, now this is where things get really interesting for me. I've heard people talking about how links can actually be integrated into what we call native applications. Yeah. What is that all about? Well, this is where links gets really powerful, and it's kind of pushing the boundaries of what web technology can do. It lets developers embed what's called a links view, links view. right into native applications. So it's kind of like bridging the gap between you know, what we can do on the web and the specific features of your device. So are you saying, like, for example, you could have a mobile app yeah. That's built with links that has like the flexibility of a web interface. Yeah. But it can also tap into like the hardware of your phone. Exactly. Like the camera or GPS. Exactly. You can access all of that. That is wild. So you could have like a, a travel app. Yeah. That not only shows you beautiful pictures, but it can also use your GPS to give you directions. Real time directions all on the same app. Wow. Okay. Beamless. It feels like Lynx has the potential to really like fundamentally change how we even think about building user interfaces. It does. It really does. And it kind of raises this big question, you know, with Lynx being able to kind of merge the web and native development like this, is this a glimpse into the future? Is this mm -hmm. how we're going to be building all kinds of interfaces across any device you can imagine? I don't know, but it's exciting to think about. It is. It is. That's Lynx. That's Lynx. Check it out. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll be back next week with another deep dive.